Letting go can be difficult, but in many cases, it is absolutely necessary. And unfortunately, in some cases, the man you're trying to let go isn't making it easy. All right. He's fighting tooth and nail to stay in your life. He is not going quietly. And that creates a lot of stress or lots of frustration. And it keeps you in a cycle that you do not belong in. And so a lot of women need, I want to encourage you if you're going through that, or maybe you have a friend, because it may not apply to you right now, apply to a friend, a family member, someone that needs to hear this how to successfully cut a man off, right? And let's just get right to it. Let's not even drag this out. And this wasn't even initially on my list, but it hit my spirit, so I have to speak on it first. Number one thing, the the top of the line thing that you have to do if you want to successfully cut a man off is understand why he needs to go, okay? That's the foundational piece to being successful in doing everything else I'm about to mention on this list. And I was really planning to start with a completely different, even funnier first thing, but we'll get to it eventually. Let's focus for first on understanding why he needs to be let go. A lot of women struggle with sticking to keeping that man out of their life or not falling back into the pattern of, you know, dealing with him again because they haven't accepted why he does not belong there. They're still either rationalizing, they're still questioning, they're still confused, they're still hoping, right? They're still fantasizing. And and one of the things that lead to confusion is, but I still love him. I still feel for him, which is fine. That's understandable, right? But loving him doesn't mean he's the right guy for you. Loving him doesn't mean you need to be with him, whether that be right now or ever, okay? Sometimes you have to love people from a distance and you have to understand that you need separation from this man, whether that's to set you free to receive who is or if it's a situation that maybe can work out later on down the line, but it cannot work out currently as it is continuing to deal with him, all right? So you've really got to come to peace about why this man needs to go and accept it and not fight it and dance around it because without that, you're going to have a hard time sticking to anything else I mentioned on this list, okay? And for those of you who are believers, part of what's going to strengthen your acceptance or understanding of why this needs to go is you actually praying and asking God, does this man belong in my life? And and receiving that clarity from God can help strengthen you to stand on the ground you need to stand on. So make sure if you're trying to navigate past this or help someone navigate past it, You accept why he has to go. All right, so now let's get to, we can count that as like a bonus, all right? Uh, uh, Intro bonus. Let's get to some of the main things I want you to do to successfully cut a man off. And the first one on the list I'm going to talk about is call the police. (laughs) Listen, I was going to say this to the last, but I figured let's start off with a bang. All right, Let's, let's get right to it. Now, let's... All jokes aside, I don't want you to jump straight to that, all right? All jokes aside, let's not escalate situations that don't need to be escalated. But let's just get out the way the simple fact that sometimes it may get to that point. Some people will not take no for an answer. Some people will not give you the peace and the rest that you are trying to get by releasing them from your life. And you have to, at the very least, be prepared to take it to that level if they won't do what they're supposed to do. You got stories of of some men popping up at this woman's job, you know, doing this and that. And some people may find it cute at first because he's trying so hard, but there comes a point where it's like, listen, enough is enough. I need you to respect that I don't want to do this anymore. And you got to go and you got to put it out there. If you persist, 
and you will leave me no choice but to get the authorities involved. All right. Some of you may have to get to a point of filing a restraining order. My hope and prayer is that it doesn't have to go that far. Right. But again, it is something that has to be considered. Now, for those of you who might be dealing with a man who is a danger to your life. OK, who there there is a heightened threat, then, of course, absolutely. One, you got to consider the police, not even consider you got to get them involved. Right. Father restraining order, even if you feel like, well, the police can't, because I'm not going to lie, I'm not well enough versed on how that whole dynamic is handled initially. But I think at least putting out, filing reports, some things so that we, we have a paper trail of what's going on here is going to be good for you. Now, I think there's other outlets like the National Domestic Abuse Hotline and things of that nature that you can look into to help you if you are in that position. But Either way, it is unfortunately uh, uh, something that you may have to implement, right? But before we jump to that, outside of the man who's a danger to you, let's consider some of the other things you can do to successfully cut a man off. All right, so now uh, let's get to a less intense (laughs) approach to take. And another thing you can do to successfully cut a man off is be very honest and transparent about why you are cutting him off, okay? Here's what I'm saying. And and this is in the instance, of course, where this man is persisting. Because, of course, if you say, let's just say you ghosted somebody because you're like, okay, I don't want to deal with this anymore, so you just stop talking to him. And he rolls with that, then okay, problem solved. But sometimes that's not going to work, and he's going to be pushing. And what I can tell you is that A lack of clarity creates confusion and confusion can create chaos. And sometimes people's persistence and unwillingness to accept you letting them go is because they don't understand why. This isn't making any sense to them. And when you try to feed them uh, BS answers, BS explanations, you know, explanations that don't make any sense or they can pick up on is not, you're not being real and honest about things, that will only add more fuel to the fire, okay? Now, does it mean that 100%, as long as you're honest, they're gonna fully accept that? No, not always. But I do feel that what I've seen in many situations is that level of honesty, because sometimes once you actually make it clear, so let's say, for example, um, it's a nice guy, but, and he's treating you well, but it just is not working. You're not happy there. This is, you don't want to do this anymore. Right? So to him, this is like, why? I don't get it. I, I was good to you. I did the things that you wanted. And let's say at the core of this, you're not attracted to him and you, you were never really attracted to him, but you try to force yourself to just give it a try. Now I know that it's hard to admit that because you don't want to hurt someone's feelings and tell them you were just never attracted to them. All these things, I get it, right? And I understand why many will attempt to give some other kind of roundabout answer to avoid having to keep it that real. But again, you risk them not giving up because it just your answer's just not making sense. Okay, if you're saying stuff like, well, I just feel like we weren't on the same page. What do you mean? I I was I did what you asked of me. I was showing up. This doesn't make sense. So now I keep pushing, keep pushing. But when you hit them with the truth like that. One, that's hard to bounce back from. And this is like there's not an angle to fight that on. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like, damn, it's defeating. But. All right. That closes that door. And so there's going to be situations where, yeah, it requires you just being that honest, even though you may not want to reveal certain things. Now, of course, I know there's I I can't assure that everyone's going to be honest, depending on what their real reason is. I'm just encouraging what I believe is going to help as a more effective approach to actually getting this man to back off and accept that you are cutting him off, letting him go. So you want to, as much as possible, be open, 
be transparent. I also think that in being open and transparent, let them speak their piece. So what I mean by that is by not letting people get things off their chest, that again causes the issue to linger, right? And it makes it harder for them to walk away and let go. But letting them speak their piece, whether that be via a letter, whether that be a last conversation, I do think is can be very helpful to just, all right, we're going we're gonna to discuss this or you can lay it all out for me and then we're done because there's nothing else that needs to be said. You spoke your piece. I spoke my piece. We, we're clear about what's going on here and why we can't continue. And then we move forward. All right. And again, I'm not saying any of these methods are 100 percent foolproof will always work, but I do believe they will increase the chances of bringing closure to situations and not having it linger on, causing you all kinds of extra stress. All right. So now here's another thing that you can do to successfully cut a man off. We just spoke about it, but I'm just going to quickly highlight it again. And that is now making sure you get everything off your chest. Okay. So we talked about letting him get, speak his piece, but yes, you need to speak your piece too, because again, there's two parts of successfully cutting that man off. There is him coming to acceptance and accepting the release. And there is you not staying in conflict that draws you back into the negative cycle. And for a lot of women, for a lot of people, I always say you heal by releasing, not by suppressing. When you don't get things off your chest, you are holding on to this energy, these feelings that now only linger inside of you. And because they're lingering inside of you and through moments where you might be triggered are coming back to the forefront of your mind, it keeps this unhealthy attachment alive to this individual. And now that opens the door for him being able to slide back in, or you may be even reaching back out and now finding yourself back into the cycle. For you to truly be free, you have to free how you feel. You know, it's like how scripture says, the truth will set you free. It's not just like knowing it, it's speaking it, it's living in it, it's walking in it. That will set you free. So consider that you have to take those steps too. Now, I think the most effective way for most people in most situations to accomplish this is via a letter because verbal communication of deep feelings and concerns typically in many cases don't go well because people start to listen to rebuttal. They deflect, they get defensive. You may get distracted. You may forget some of the things that you wanted to say. And now you have some stones that were left unturned. There's a lot that can go wrong in a verbal conversation. However, writing a letter allows you to get everything out, gather your thoughts, you know, express yourself in the most effective way, manner, you know, being mindful of your tone, all these different things. And it also, for the sake of them even being able to receive your message, it allows them to read, to understand. Because again, when people talk, they tend to listen to rebuttal, but when they read, they read to process. Okay. And that, and for that reason, the message has a greater chance of resonating with them or getting through to them on a deeper level. So I do think that if you are struggling in this area or haven't addressed it, write that letter. Now, there will be some instances where just writing the letter without having to send it can be acceptable. I'm going to always say talk to God about that aspect of it. But I think at the very least, you should write the letter because even if you're not going to send it, releasing how you feel is going to allow you to feel much better and strengthen your ability to not fall back into the negative cycle. All right. So here's another, and I, I would say this is a big one. When trying to successfully cut a man off, stop talking to friends and family about him. And not only stop talking to friends and family about him, let them know to stop talking to you about him, okay? Because there's a lot of situations where you're trying to break free and 
your own family may have an attachment to this man being in your life, okay? And they may be struggling with what is the end of your situation, right? Or they may just be trying to be there for you. And in that, they're not mindful of the fact that they're constantly bringing it up and checking on you about it, which is only making it harder for you to move forward and move past it. So you want to make sure first that you are not the initiator of this, these discussions. And it's very normal. We're all human to initially want to talk to somebody and express yourself or get their opinion. Understandable. Again, be careful of how many people you let into this dynamic, but it's understandable. But there has to be a cutoff point. There has to be a point where we say, okay, we've discussed it. Because what happens a lot of times is you end up having the same discussion over and over and over and over again. So it's like you're not even accomplishing anything positive. You're just constantly venting, maybe hoping that someone will say something new and different, right? But it's not even happening. And it's like, now it's getting to a pointless place. So we want to make sure we are not initiating these unnecessary conversations after a certain point, right? But then again, we're letting people know, hey, let's just leave that alone. Let's not discuss it. Let's move forward so I can have more peace and, and not keep falling back into it. And I will say that if you are dealing with a family or friend, friend family or friend who does themselves have an attachment to what maybe they were hoping the outcome of this situation would be. You just have to be honest with them about it. You almost have to do with them what you were going to do with, with what you're doing with the man you're cutting off, meaning make sure you're being honest with them about why you had to let go. Make sure you express your deeper understanding of why this has to be done right now. All right. Be transparent um, and, and and don't, if, if, if they are holding on to a hope, sometimes we need to discuss that. Meaning, okay, if you have a parent and they're, they just keep bringing them up because deep inside they were hoping that this would be the guy that you could get married to and have kids and th they're struggling with letting go of that dream that they thought was going to finally come true in this situation. I do think that there needs to be a discussion like, listen, I get it. I understand but you have to understand this was not the right person for me. And I need you to respect that. And in helping me or in, in not causing me to struggle with this, it will allow me to be ready and prepared to receive the person who is. So if you really want this for me, then don't work against me in this process. Work with me and help me get to a better place and don't keep putting this on me. And I think I would hope, and I do believe in many situations, that will help many to back off, chill out, and understand they're causing more harm than good by holding on to their dream and not respecting where you need to go in your life. All right, so real quick, before I continue, I just want to shout out uh, the, the, the team, the organization that's helped me for many years with my YouTube videos, with captioning and all these things. And if there's any of you who are doing YouTube, doing videos anywhere that could use these services, check out ubooster.com, right? Or you can email brianongaga at gmail.com. Uh, great guys, great company. They've done tons of great work for me, and I know they'll be great for you as well. So again, you can go check out ubooster.com. All right, so we got a few more to go. And another thing to be mindful of when trying to successfully cut a man off is do not entertain his attempts, okay? So if you are serious about this is done and you know and you've come to, you've come to true clarity and peace that this is not the man for you, and I'm saying it like that because some of y'all might be in a situation where you're reacting reacting negatively to a situation that can be fixed. I don't want to cause confusion. I'm just going to say pray about it, okay? And just putting it out there. But if you know this is not the man for you, this needs to be done, you're letting him go. Again, you got to understand that even in some of the most unhealthy, toxic relationships, that man is not going to go easily. Especially, especially 
if you have been basically holding him up, meaning like I ran to somebody over the weekend that was dealing with a guy who was previously in jail. And since he's been out, uh, they've been together for a few years and he's cheated constantly. But he's always saying, I'm sorry, it won't happen again. And she was like, you know, do you think he'll ever change or and get better? And I was like, listen, one, based on what you're telling me, no. But I said, understand something because she's like, yeah, but he's always begging me not to go and to stay. He's going to do better. I said, if you are taking care of this man, if you have been his backbone um, and, and giving him a place to stay and all these different things, he has no reason to let go. Of course, he's going to fight it. Of course, he's going to beg. Of course, he's going to say, I'm sorry. But he's not changing his behavior. He hasn't. So there's no reason for us to believe that now it's going to all stop. It, it, it'd be one thing if there was a very specific issue that needs to be addressed. And even then, with, with their specific situation, I don't think that would necessarily apply in other people's situation. Possible. But bottom line is like, yo, you're providing for him. He can't cut off that lifeline. So don't confuse his his fight to not let go as in, well, maybe he does love me and he will change. No, he just has reasons to hold on to the resources you bring to the table for him. Plain and simple. So with that guy, you can't entertain his attempts. You can't entertain his I'm sorry. You can't entertain when he pops up at the job. You can't entertain when he calls you. What happens in a lot of situations is a woman is trying to cut this man off and every time he texts you, you're responding. What you responded for? If you're serious, you got to stop responding because every response is hope for him to keep pushing. Every time you entertain a conversation or you entertain him when he popped up at your job with him, it's fuel for him to keep pushing. And, and in many cases, he knows, especially when we're, and more specifically when we're dealing with a very master manipulator type of dude, he knows if he keeps pushing enough, you're going to break. That at some point, you're going to give in and let him back in. And we're right back to square one. So the only way you can stop him is, or at least have a great chance of stopping him, is you got to stop entertaining it. And so that's why sometimes you got to delete the messages, block social media, block the, you got to do everything. You got to do whatever it takes to protect your peace and to ensure that you're not going to keep falling back into this cycle when you already know for sure this is not the man you need to be dealing with. This is not the man for you. And he has not shown up as that man for however long you've been dealing with him. All right. So we got a couple more to mention. And this, I talked about it earlier, but I want to bring it back up because I need to add a little more context to it. So the other thing to do to successfully cut a man off is let him speak his piece but don't dismiss how he feels, okay? Here's why that's important. I know some of y'all are like, hell, I don't give a damn about his feelings. <laughs> and I understand in certain situations why that would, that would be the case, right? But the goal isn't about honoring his feelings for his sake, so to speak. We're focused on how do we create resolution? How do we put an end to this negative cycle? And what I see is that if someone expresses themselves and you get caught up in trying to dismiss how they feel or dismiss their perception of things, you are then either roped into a battle of fighting what his, what the real deal was, or they now have fuel to where they can't give up in letting you go because they feel like you're just not seeing it the right way and they can convince you to see it the right way, then you might change your mind. You see what I'm saying? So you, you only set the stage for more battle and we're trying to avoid that. So it's not about even having to agree with him. I don't have to agree to not dismiss, right? So basically if, if the guy says, well, I, I just felt like, you know, you weren't giving me enough of an opportunity to change. And let's say you know damn well you don't gave this man tons of opportunity to change. You don't have to get into fighting with him about that because sometimes that's the manipulation tactic. It's to try to turn the tables on you and make you feel like you did something wrong and the problem is really you, not him. And then you get into battling that and before you know it, he done roped you back in, okay? 
You can simply say, okay, I completely understand how you feel. Doesn't change how you feel about it. Doesn't change your stance. Doesn't change the fact that you still have come to the conclusion that this is the, this, this is what is best for you right now. And it's time to move on. Do not fight how, what he's expressing. Do not dismiss. Do not get caught up in trying to battle points that are irrelevant to what the overall issue is and what the outcome needs to be right now. All right. Plain and simple. And if you can conquer that, you will be able to avoid a lot of headaches and a lot of unnecessary back and forth. All right. And now another thing you can do to successfully cut a man off. And it's another one of those things I mentioned, but got to add some more to it. And as I mentioned earlier, it is block him on everything and remove his stuff. So let's talk more about the remove his stuff for a second. That I see a lot of situations where women are trying to break free from this guy they should no longer be with, but they still want to hold on to sentimental things. They still hold on to things that remind them of this man. They still hold on to things or they're still even lurking on his social media, right? And it's like, all you're doing is torturing yourself. All you're doing is making things harder for you to move in the direction you need to move in. Now, I understand there could be deeper reasons why someone is not ready to throw stuff away, right? Fine. Maybe it's not you have to throw it all away right now. Maybe it's put it all in a bag, give that bag to a friend and tell them, hey, just keep it in your closet somewhere. I just don't want to see it right now. And maybe when you get to a a more clear-headed place or a more peaceful place, you can make a final decision on whether you want to uh, throw away the stuff or what you know what you want to do with it. Sometimes also the things that remind you of him are things that you value. Like, I don't know why I'm thinking about this right now, but let's just say he bought you that TV. And every time you look at that TV, <laughs> you think about how he got that for you. And you don't want to throw away the TV because you ain't got a replacement for the TV right now. And you like your TV, okay? So I get where that might be difficult. Um, and so I understand there's, there's exceptions to every rule. But I do think that anything that you can remove, remove it. Anything that's going to cause you to stumble, remove it. And be honest with yourself about what needs to go. And I do think, even though I made the joke about the TV, if that TV is really causing you a problem to find peace and move forward, then yeah, you got to get rid of the TV too. All right. Again, if you're not ready to throw it away, give it away, put it away somewhere until you get to a place where you can handle seeing these things or, or being in the presence of certain things and it doesn't trigger you. It doesn't have that negative impact on you. It goes back to being just the TV rather than the TV he got me. When you can get to that place, all right, cool. But if you're still stuck on that's where he got me and that's just playing in your head, that's a problem. So, you know, take an inventory and, and in taking an inventory, pray, ask God, is there anything I need to do to help me break out of this, to help me not fall back into this cycle? And again, make sure you heal. And when I say heal, don't just focus on only healing from this relationship or this situation. Heal from everything in your past that hurt you, because all of those things are contributing to the struggle you're facing right now, or may God forbid face with somebody in a future situation like this. So when you do all of the work to release all those things that's been lingering within you, you will give yourself the strength, the power, and the peace of mind to overcome all these obstacles and to be in a position to receive what is truly best for you. Thank you for watching this video. I really pray it was helpful to you. Be sure to watch this one over here on seven real reasons why men always come back. But let's be real. It, it, they can be grown and still not be mature. They can be grown and still not understand what a good woman really is. And one of those reasons I have to mention that the, at least the older guys may not understand and grasp when they have a good woman is because they're still holding on to all their previous bad experiences and they look at everything through this hurt lens. 
through this perception of you can't trust a woman or no woman is ever that good or no woman ever truly loves you. There's even stuff on the internet saying that, you know, a woman doesn't know how to love like a man does. I, I don't agree with that. But they say it and a lot of these men take this information in and now that causes them to struggle with accepting or understanding when 